Hi, my name is Jen, your friendly neighborhood dog groomer. I've been a groomer for 20 years and finally opened my own salon four years ago with the inspiration from my grandmother. From the moment I opened my salon, it's been my mission to make grooming affordable and accessible to as many people as possible while educating and encouraging at-home care habits and practices. I've built my business on a different model. I want to help keep as many dogs as possible, as healthy as possible, for as long as possible. I want to be grooming the same dogs and have the same clients in the next 10 to 15 years. I'm not looking to make a quick buck or to make a million dollars off my clients in the next five years. I'm more than happy to share my knowledge and ways that you can care for your dog affordably at home. You don't have to spend hundreds of dollars on equipment like I do for at-home use, I promise. I have a different philosophy in my grooming and in running my business. Simple is best, and building relationships with my clients and the dogs will keep me in business for the long run. I can also have as many dogs as I want, while my husband is happy that he doesn't have to pay for the upkeep of that many animals. <laughs> I'd also like to just say in all seriousness... I'm not disrespecting or calling out anyone in my industry, to each their own. I don't need all the newfangled gadgets. I keep it as simple as and stress-free as possible. It's just me and my kids, with my husband popping in occasionally on his days off. This is a canister force dryer. Most force dryers come with at least two nozzles, a round and a flat. The round is to sleep water off faster, and the flat is for shedding general purposes and also great for lifting and straightening curly coats. Force dryers of quality can easily cost several hundreds of dollars for a single purpose item. For a professional in a shop setting, that's fine, but not necessary for home needs. Most people already have a piece of equipment at home or can easily get it at their local hardware store or Walmart, a canister vacuum, commonly referred to as a shop vac, but that's an actual name brand and it doesn't even need to be a name brand. Mine is the Walmart brand. I picked it up on sale for under $70 in June of 2023. All you need to do is make sure whichever one you choose has dual ports, vacuum port and the rear blower port, and the flat crevice tool or the ability to buy one compatible with your vacuum. Here I'm using a force dryer to help shed out cash, a healer mix. As you can see, I'm close to the ears, so I'm folding his ears down to protect his ears and eyes. You might be able to see the mist blowing off of him. That's a mix of water and hair. The key to blowing out as much hair as possible is to move the nozzle in short strokes back and forth quickly. If the dog's wet, try alternating slower and faster strokes to work on drying and shedding at the same time. Wearing eye and ear protection is also a good idea. Here I'm using the vacuum alternative on Bear, a Shepherd Husky mix. He's already done his big shed out for this time of year, so this is just a touch up visit. My number one recommendation if you use this alternative, empty the canister and give it all a quick rinse to avoid blowing any dirt or debris into the coat and skin of your dog. Dogs need to be brushed. Unfortunately, most people are just told to brush, but not how. This drives me absolutely insane. The common person will definitely try, but because they aren't shown how, brushing at home becomes ineffective and sometimes even detrimental to the dog. Most will use the wrong brush, which does not separate the hair fully or truly reach the skin, or the owner will only brush over the top of the hair called surface brushing. This also does not fully separate the hair or truly reach the skin. It also can make any knots turn into mats and push them deeper into the coat, eventually pushing them all the way to the skin. Here we have Bear. Again, he is a Shepherd Husky mix. I'm using a medium, firm slicker brush and starting where the hair is the thinnest and shortest. Using my free hand, I pull the hair backwards and gently brush from the skin out, slowly moving up and into the body. Now, as you can see, Bear is not a fan of having his hiney touched, so I move into his body and neck to try to give you a bit of an example of how to do this technique over the whole body. And remember, he's already done his big shout out 
and he's already bl been blown out really well, and he's a regular, so he's not going to brush out a ton of hair. Once every dog is completely brushed out, I will go back over their entire body with a fine tooth comb to make sure that I have removed as much hair as I can. Lacey is a medium length, curly coated border collie with extremely dry, sensitive skin. I don't use the force dryer on her as much because the warm air of the dryer can dry her skin out more. So she still tends to have more hair that needs to be manually brushed out. But because she has sensitive skin, I use the soft slicker brush to avoid irritating her skin. I still use the exact same technique. Here we have Cooper, a boxer mix. There are many breeds that have extremely thin, slick, short hair, but shed badly. For some owners, it's hard to know what to do for these dogs without irritating their skin because their hair is so thin. Breeds like boxers, pits, greyhounds, and whippets, just to name a few, would benefit from a good blowout to lift and loosen any dead hair and a brush down with a silicone brush known also as a curry comb. As you can see, the curry comb pulls a lot of hair out of Cooper, but is still very gentle and will not irritate his skin. Thank you for joining me today. Remember, at-home care does not have to be expensive.